Well, here we go, driving up to Idaho and coming off my first elk hunt, which was in my home state of Utah. Hunted the last three weeks pretty hard, did a lot of hiking, did a lot of glassing, calling, and everything in between, and was just never able to fill my Utah tag. And even though this is a completely different tag in a different state, it feels like the same hunt to me. I'm pretty wore out, but to be honest, I'm gonna take advantage of any opportunity I can on a legal bull up in Idaho. As you're about to see, hunting the private boundary games can be a lot of fun, but it can be pretty frustrating. A little sunny today. I'm sure they're bedded up in the timber, but we got some real open slopes up ahead of us. No elk on, but some good looking country in here, guys. There's horse tracks in, but there's also horse tracks out, so fingers crossed it. Those guys have pulled out. I think we saw where they tied up their horses and have maybe had a camp there. To the left of us on Onyx, it shows a couple creek bottoms. We're definitely gonna need access to water daily, especially at night to cook all these meals. So we're gonna try to find somewhere to camp close to a water source. So once we get a little elevation, we're gonna go check this creek bottom. I'm almost positive I can hear the water running down there. So we'll see if there's water. And if so, we might ditch the packs there, station out a little camp. And uh, that way I can just send an Onyx pin to Casey, who's behind us just a few hours. Let him know where we're at and then there should be enough time for a good evening hunt. Good evening glass. Make something happen, so moving on. Love this country though, man. This is super different than what I've been hunting all season. It's like that typical, like I could see an elk calling and coming through this stuff and it'd be hard to get a shot, but they gotta come investigate. Camp tour. We've got my camp set up. I'm on the other side of the log, closer to the river. Got my Idrali tent, same setup Matt and I have been using. Matt's in his big tent, Big Agnes. Solar panel charger. We're gonna hike up to uh, this ridge and try to get some elevation to just glass and listen and see what's going on. Surprisingly, it's been getting dark so much, like so much earlier, faster it seems like. So we're taking the decoy, going in with the idea that if we can see some elk, we'll try to get on them. We saw multiple elk, cows, and a big bull, a really nice six point. There are ways up there, kind of out in the wide open on this top. We don't know exactly what we're gonna do, but I think we're gonna keep switch backing up this ridge because the backbone up here kind of connects to the one they're on and it all depends on what they do tonight because right now they're on private i was looking on onyx and the it kind of the private kind of jogs up and over that ridge right there and then it's like flat here so with a little bit of luck they'll want to feed downhill tonight you never know no bugles yet but they're up on their feet so that's good but even seeing those is definitely giving us some motivation. Those guys over that 
a little swell there. We're getting some elevation, getting to see a lot of country. It's super pretty up here. No bugles. This group of elk hanging out at the top, but it looks like the, the bull's trying to drive them kind of off the ridge and into some other country that we can't see. I mean, that's possibly because there's a satellite bull that came over the ridge right at them. So there was, like, in the satellite bulls, no slouch either. Two nice bulls are up there for sure. found all the elk and they're about three quarters of a mile into the private <sighs> I've been telling these guys like dude I don't even know what an elk rut looks like anymore or sounds like and got a good reminder right here it's got to be there's literally over a hundred elk right here 30 bulls and they're screaming their face off, running all over the side of this hill. And you can see their antler tips on the skylines and stuff, and it's just crazy. Like, I can't even believe there's that many elk right there, and they're just on these tops way up here, and they're out in the open. You'd think they'd be pushed into the timber and stuff, but they're using these tops, and I'm sure they got great visual, and they're just posted up, just doing their thing up there, and they are loud. They're going crazy, multiple bulls fighting. Like this, this right here is the elk rut. I guess we've got here. tons of elk up in here. There's two bulls and at least a cow. That's pretty dang close to the boundary. So Matt and I are gonna kind of drop down here, lose some elevation to get out of their sight and come up into this group of pine trees on public. And there's at least two bulls and they're both five points or whatever. And with that, maybe we can coax one of them out of there to come check us out. We got a decoy and we got some calls. bugling they're super loud we were trying to call one off this top we know there's a couple smaller bulls up here and the only thing that peeked over was a cow and she kind of like checked just down in this draw where we're at lost interest and pulled aside so tonight all these elk are moving down hopefully through the night they move down low enough to come into the public ground and if that's the case maybe we'll have a better morning hunt here but pretty fun just being out here and hearing these bulls going going nuts Really, really cool. Glad I just got to see that. Hopefully we get to see it a little closer tomorrow. Back to camp. Oh, that was a fun night, but man, even being packed in here as far as we are, that was still a pretty good little push for a new, just a PM hunt. Um, back to camp, fill up with water, boil some water and get some food ready. We both have like six dehydrated meals, a bunch of different ones, so we're gonna get those going and get some food.
one might be curious because he's alone. Guys, we've got elk. But they're just on the other side of the private, so we're gonna see if any of these bulls are curious enough to come over. That one's not with the herd. like 300 yards off the boundary line. seen an elk rut or heard an elk rut like that for a long time. Granted, they're all on private. They were about 300 yards from the boundary lane this morning. I don't think they ever crossed, so you can tell they know where they're safe and comfortable. And that's why they're just acting like elk and just being wild and doing the rut few tracks that have like come through here, right here on the boundary in the pines. And they were just up on this ridge at first light. The sun's not even up and pretty much this play's already over, so we're gonna sit and watch these, but we can just pop off this edge and glass a bunch of public. But man, it's like every elk like in this general area is just mobbed up right there. It's pretty impressive. But it makes for a pretty frustrating hunt. I've been dealing with that all year though, so. It's kind of what I've been working with all year. The boundary games can be fun, and they've been awesome to me some years, but not this year. How could we not just get like a little raggy to come down off? Huh? What up? Saw, dude. Are you guys up here? All cutting? You go floorless? To the teepee? I got my insert in there, dude. Oh, yeah, like the half one, huh? Yeah. What's up, What's up guys? Oh, uh, just found a good camp spot. I freaking like it. We want to be dehydrated and melt a lot, so <laughs> I figured we better be by water. Yeah, a creek here, you got a creek there. Time for the PM hunt. 
We got Casey leading us into some country. We just saw some bulls uh, yesterday, right when he got here, before the hike in. So just stumbled on this little seep. I think this would be like a killer wallow, but doesn't look like it's being used at all. Mostly just cattle. So tonight we're heading in a different direction. Give those bulls a break. And uh, maybe with a day or two of giving a little break, they'll actually come over here to public. So trying a new spot tonight. Maybe some calling. Spot and stock. Just we'll see. Let's, let's start the elk frenzy, dude. We are going to be the rut. We're going to be the rut. We're going to be the other side of the mountain rut since it's already going over there. Yeah, the bolts I saw last night from the trailhead, there was at least six or seven bulls. It looked like they were like mid-August form. Like not interested. And they just, just heads had down feeding the whole back time. Back to the group. Yeah. Stalk them, man. I'll shoot them all. I would assume, though, if they're there, they'd be very callable. Even if they're not like doing it, they're always interested. Yeah, something comes. Yeah. Maybe they're like, screw that. We're not yeah. ever going to get a piece of that. Let's go but over here. A lost cow? Yeah. That's they're like, you go, huh? There's at least 30 elk right up there. Well, same story as the rest of this little hunt so far is we've got elk about 150 to 200 yards just on the private side of the boundary line. This little group right here has got 30 elk at least and a couple dang nice bulls. One really, really nice six point. We did our best to get some video through um the optics we've got the all-in adapter of course and we got some video of them right on top of this knob in front of them is another group of like five or six and they're just kind of wandering off towards um kind of the big mob that we've been seeing but it's a beautiful evening up here the sun just went down it's almost hard to believe that there's not a single bugle on the public side but i'm sure this area has just been getting hit hard with pressure and I mean, in my opinion, this just shows like the difference sometimes, not all times, but of public and private, especially when there's pressure on one side and not so much the other. All those elk are living in the heavenly grounds where they're not being bothered. They're just out rutting and doing what elk do. And it's pretty fun to watch, but it's also pretty frustrating to be on this side of the fence and um, have no opportunities. We still haven't seen an elk on public ground. But we're going to keep pushing, um, keep trying, and see what we can turn up. We got Casey on the glass. That's been super helpful. He's over there just classing some big country, and it's been a fun trip. I would just really, really like an opportunity on a public land out. So we're just going to keep pushing till dark, and then we're going to get a small hike to camp and go eat. Good morning folks. I'm just uh, getting ready to hike out of camp. We decided we're not going too far this morning. We're just gonna pull out of this creek bottom, get some elevation and glass these big faces. Again, checking the boundary line to see if any of those elk that we saw last night dropped below onto public. I'd say they were only like 150 yards from the boundary last night. So with a little luck, they're on our side and we will have a little play today. If they're not, we might be in for another long day, so that's the game. Got to keep checking.
huge breakthrough today, guys. Three huge. elk on public land, two cows and a calf. And right now they're just sitting and feeding on the rocks where Matt and I have been kind of popping up and over this saddle right up there on the boundary. So those are the first elk, right, Matt, that we've seen on public ground. Casey spotted them working through the trees and I was like, no way, that's exactly where we go. Um, but they're gonna cross in about five minutes. And then there's those 100, 100 elk up above the, the private boundary, so. Yeah, it's kind of like a repeat. But you got to keep checking. It's the only thing you can do up here. Might start uh, exploring different options though. Making some phone calls, we'll see. For now we're just going to watch the elk that are up here and see if any of them make a mistake and come down. A couple nice bulls up there again. They're just feeding in the heavenly side hill where we go. Never seen anything like it. Here we go, guys. Might actually have a decent opportunity to get into some milk. This afternoon on public, that last little group that Casey saw kind of come up and over the top of the skyline. It sounds like they've settled down up on this bench above our camp and we've heard about four or five bugles. So something's going on up there. We didn't see a bull when those cows came over. Casey just saw a spike, but it's hard to believe that a group of cows would be running the way they were and uh, not have a bull with them. So. Something's bugling up here. It's definitely on the public side, so I'm pretty pumped. This could be the opportunity we needed, the opportunity we've been waiting for. So thanks to Casey's Eagle Eyes for spotting them. That was a good spot.
my can slap it right now. Come on, this way. It's 2.50 p.m. We've been up here since this morning just watching all these elk. They've put on a pretty dang good show. There's a couple really good mature bulls. A 6x6 and a 5x5. And the 5x5 from what we've seen looks to be the bigger bodied dominant bull. And they kind of had a herd each and they were really keeping their distance in this basin. But something brought them together. I think it was a couple calves that were putting out like a really whiny cow or calf call um, two calves were just kind of running around playing and suddenly they merged and those two bulls locked antlers right up here right in front of us it was so cool but the five by five is the, was the winner of that fight he had the uphill advantage and he pushed that six point down out of the group of cows and the six point kind of lost interest he, i'm sure he feels a little defeated and he's pulled himself down in elevation really close to the boundary right here that we've been waiting for and it looks like he's all alone and he's got himself up into these little jack pine trees. We think he's gonna either bed or just rest up right there. So we're gonna buzz over. We got a whole basin to follow or drop into and get on the ridge of the next side and just try to coax him down with some cow calls. Possibly use the decoy and just see if we can pull him in. He's only like 200 yards up there and he's alone, like I said, so it's looking good. Might get a chance. It's a bigger bull. Yeah. Can you show me the elk for Guys, it's like 6.30. We've been perched up on this knob all afternoon just glassing and waiting for elk hopefully to come down. But Casey put up the glass down deep in the public ground and spotted an elk and uh, about four or five cows. So there's a five point. They were bedded on this rocky knob. 
and they have since just got up and started milling around on the shady side. So this is gonna be a mad dash for Matty Ice to cover probably like a mile, mile and a half, I don't know, and get in a position. And if they stay there, we can come over the top and try to get a shot of this bull. Things possible? Got enough daylight? If they stay there, guys, this could be epic. This could be like a spot stock mule deer hunt for out. So, we're going. We have no time to waste, so let's go. Would have been right there, but you would have been able to see him, but there must be just enough ridge for us. Good win. Dude, if we come over the top, I'd like to come behind him, because he's last. He's dead. He's dead. 
Claire. <laughs> he just rolled into the brush. I heard him crash, but I just thought he was racing. Matty Ice. Dude, that was hard to put trust in my in my uh, rangefinder there. You saw him go down. Dude, I cow called, he stopped, got wobbly, tipped right over. I heard him take a thud while those cows were sitting right there, but I wasn't sure. Casey. Yo, dog. What up? You kill a bull? Matt says I did, but I haven't seen it yet. What, you, you like, did you shoot it? He shot, Matt says I killed it, it tipped over down here, but I haven't seen it, so I don't know what to believe. <laughs> Where do you think he hit it at? Dude, in the freaking smokehouse, but- He hit it in the lungs, like Cal called it, stopped and rolled down the hill, dead. Dude, Matt says he's dead, I still haven't seen it, and I'm on his track. Trust me, do you trust me? <laughs> Are you guys out from the cliffs? Dude, just straight to the direction they were going. They were on the steep side hill, and we set up a cow call sequence that Matt called out and freaking, dude, called him right in, and he was, like, going broadside, and I ranged him. And I was like, 52. And then I ranged again, I was like, 28. I'm like, well, I know he's not 28, so I guess I'll put some faith in 52. And 50 is my yellow. I put it mid-body and squoze it off, dude. And I heard a thud, and my Luminoc disappeared. I know that. <laughs> and Matt's like, yeah, dude, he's dead down there. But I haven't seen him, bro. Come over here. I'm coming. We stalked him to 120, and Matt's like, dude, he's getting, he's just, like, too fast. Let's call. We got the decoy out and everything, dude. Matt just chirped, and all of a sudden, I see his antlers coming up. I thought he was looking at me. He chirped again. He's coming closer. I'm like, dude, that thing's going to be 30 any second. And he was just, he wasn't sure, so he's stepping broadside and everything. And he stepped broadside and looked down at his cow, so I stood up and drew. He kept hearing you. Every time I'd cow call, it was because he'd look over towards you. Really? Uh -huh. It was gnarly, dude. That was pretty freaking intense. I can't <laughs> wait to see the video that Mac got. How's the footage? One hand was decoy and one hand was freehand, like zoomed in. <laughs> dude, zoom? <laughs> Matt's a freaking boss, dude. Get over here. Yeah. Well, shit. Okay, send me a fan exactly where you guys are at right now. Just I'm go to. Sure I can see. Yeah. Good job, boys. Thanks, dude. <laughs> see I'll be there in a What the heck? I don't even know what to feel right now. Like, we got the bull that I we texted didn't... Casey and said, bull down, and he just goes, shut up. Oh, is that what he said? I texted him up there because I saw him tip over. I didn't. I, I heard a crash when the cows were piled up right there, and they all looked down there like, what the heck? So I'm like, what if I got to get a second one in him? Like, and then the one ran out of the bottom. Like, there he is, probably just not even hurt. It's a cow. I'm like, well, he never came out. Yeah, all, dude, Matt, did we just cows. kill a bull? Hell yeah, we did. We, dude, that's the first I've said it. Podcasts and videos, never really having like a calling sequence. Glad Matt was with me on that one because it's like, the, I, I think the decoy was oh. clutch, bro. Oh yeah, I had I purposely skylined it. I looked behind me and crouched down, and I would just turn its nose around. Dude, that was insane. <laughs> Matt just called in a freaking bull for me with a bow, dude. Did you see him turn broadside? Were you like, oh, he's going to shoot him? Yeah. Dude, I'm so glad we split up. I'm trying to hold my camera <laughs> all funky. Let me see that. Guys, September's been an absolute freaking beater for me. I'm getting my butt kicked on in Utah. I did not tag out. Luckily, the tag's still good. Came up to Idaho for the last seven days, and I'll tell you what, without Maddie and Casey coming to help me, that wasn't going to happen that way. We... We got up to where we can see him down this steep bottom. Matt called, let's get the decoy out. And you think we're 120 yards. Like, can we pull that off? Like, can we even pull that off? I could see his antler tips. We get set up. I'm like, well, I don't want to be by you. I want to be away from you. And that was the ticket. Was and so we just split up and started walking away. I see Matt crouch down. Mew, mew. I'm like, did you, I was trying to get you back. Is he coming? And you were just like, yeah, well, I don't know. He wasn't at first. I catapulted so fast because he started going through the manzanita. Uh -huh. And I was like, once he gets past that, he's not going to want to come back. Yeah. So I cow called like before you were even close to position. And he looked at me for a while and you are, you were like, is he coming? And I'm like, no. And then I you kept tell. looking at me and I'm like, it's still good. <laughs> and then all of a sudden he just kept, he walked right on the string. Dude. Yeah, it was coming like straight at me, so I was nervous. But then he turned broadside, and then he like looked again, and then he came closer and turned broadside. And guys, I'll tell you what, I didn't want to stand up because I was in, look at this brush, look at the angle. I was like, I, had, I don't know if I could stand up, but he, he turned and looked away, and I'd already ranged him, and it was like 50. I counted my pins down, 30, 40, 50, yellow, 
mid body, perfectly broadside, standing up, clear, no brush. I saw my Luminoc disappear. And it sounded like it hit and he tore out of there like a bat out of hell. And I, I like didn't know what happened, to be honest. I didn't know what happened. I wanted to believe I hit him, but I wasn't 100% sure. <laughs> I hope you guys can be patient with the single-handed zoomed in footage. I know I got the Luminoc going into the elk, no but a little bit before and after was a little tough. I can tell. That was tough. I was like, how's, I was thinking as we were coming up, or what if we need the, like, can I hold it in my bow hand and then like at the last second, like ditch it? Yeah. Do that with that perfect. I kept waiting for him. Thank to, you, Matty. I kept waiting for him to turn hard. So Thank I could you, just Drop the decoy. Uh -huh. he, never, he stayed like locked on me the whole time. Yeah, that dude. That's <laughs> freaking insane. That's so cool. Calling him in is what's up. Let's do that again, <laughs> man. I'm so happy, guys. I, I, those guys told me it was a five point. I'm like, let's go. I haven't even hardly looked at him. I think he's just a, like a little five. But I'll tell you what, another bull that I worked hard for. Super special to share it with these guys honored man appreciate matt and casey can't say it enough thanks guys good night for get my headlamp on same <laughs> you, have back have, you guys have those little clippies what the hell yeah, yeah this that. is like right on the edge of that is the last place I saw his antlers okay. walking this way. We were on the cliffs and saw him like right here. Yeah. We like snug, like spot and stock, like look down, maybe shoot him, maybe. I don't know. That's so what I we, thought was going to happen. We get to there and he's like in this bottom 120 again. And so Matt's like, hey, let's call him. Let's get the decoy. Matt saw him tip over. We haven't been down there. Dude. How about that for a day? No that, was, dude, that was a fun day of out there. frustrated, frustrated. Okay, we're seeing some. No, we're, we're seeing, seeing some. That. Bam! Dude, like the wind was just blown in our face. Yeah. I was so happy, just like we got the wind. Like so happy. just you could still feel it pushing up. Let's go! No hunger. No steady. Just like there he is. All right, we got him. Happy with that shot. That's the side I hit. Right in that pocket, you know. That's the side it's, you hit. It's a little da It's a little bit of the danger, right? The danger zone, right there. That's the side I hit for sure. Wow, I just still in disbelief that this animal is laying here in front of me. I really am. I mean, this year it's felt like bow hunting felt like starting all over again. Pretty lucky, man, even to have that opportunity. Look at my ball. Ooh, good work. Thanks for, for thinking of you. Thanks for your help. Out of everyone I know, man, you can get your butt kicked for very long. You can still stay after it. Be positive, and that's why you killed this bull. You got your butt kicked for how many days in Utah? Check it out, guys. So when we got to this bull, he pulled his antlers out of the brush and noticed that he was broken, and Matt was like, no, I filmed him. I know he had bull sides. We just rolled the bull down once to get a good spot for processing him, and Matt's like, hey, what do you know? Here's the antler. So he was laying on this. So that must have taken some serious force because that's chipped off like that. And then that would be his, that would be his antler right there. So he was a sixer on that side. One, small devil tine bump. G2, that's an inch and a half. Three, four, five, six. Pretty sweet. I'm happy with him. I told these guys when they came out here, and again, I've been hunting for so long, it feels like in September, I'm like, I'm shooting anything that's legal. It's honestly kind of fun when you do that. Especially when you're bow hunting these just over-the-counter tags and really does make it fun just getting opportunity. So super grateful for this bull. Like I said earlier, he's gonna feed a ton of people. I wanna show you guys the exit wound. So again, like I felt like he was perfectly broadside, and if you look on the other side, it's that exact spot. So I think it was a full pass through, and maybe on the hike out of here, as we get some elevation, um, we'll possibly be able to see the Illuminoc that's lit up. That's gotta be somewhere up there in the brush, but again, super grateful for even the chance to hunt elk, guys. A lot of people wait a lot of years to get out and hunt elk, and they're just waiting for that limited entry tag, and I can tell you what, it's tough, but for those of you who are looking for just a chance to go hunt out, go do it, man. Don't let anything hold you back. A lot of states offer archery tags. 
um, over the counter, just like this one. That's pretty cool, man. I've never seen that. I've heard of people um, watching them roll down a hill and snap an antler off, but I've never had that happen. Wild. Thank you, thank you, bull.